Yeah. I'll give you one that's just the opposite. I was going to say that what's a bad leadership yeah. example on, on a bad leadership example. And, and I won't name names, but you know, I went through five head coaches mm-hmm. with the Cowboys. It started with Jimmy Johnson and then it went on and ended with Bill Parcells. And through that process, and I won't, again, I won't name names, but the leadership when we were, you know, we weren't a good team. We weren't drafting the right guys. What they did is the one thing I noticed is that they weren't consistent. They were, ne- they were consistently inconsistent mm-hmm. on every topic. Guys were late. They didn't get fined the full that. It just depended on who you were. If you were a superstar, you didn't get fined. If you were, if you were a special teams guy, you got fined the max. <laughs> and there was never a, a consistent way of running the ship. And when that happens, when there's no consistency and there's no one that's stepping up and putting down the hammer, what happens specifically with alpha dogs? Mm-hmm. We, were, we run the prison. Yeah. We ran the prison. And because we ran the prison, we showed up late. We were, uh, we were a half-assed team. We made mental mistake after mental mistake. And no one was there to slap you on the hand. Mm-hmm. There was no urgency. And the leadership, it fell right on there. It fell right in their lap, mm-hmm. yeah. and I had, I, and I lost a ton of respect for those because they wouldn't. Because I came into a system yeah. that was buttoned up under Jimmy. I came into a system that was there was one dog, and his name was Jimmy Johnson. Mm-hmm. Period. It was it wasn't J- Jerry. It wasn't Michael Irvin. It was one alpha dog. A whole bunch of love. Expectations were clear. Expectations are clear. You show up for a meeting, your ass might get cut. So yeah. he, you lived sort of by, there was some fear in there, yeah. but you knew where, where you, you knew exactly what the limits were within. Yeah. So that, that part of me was, is in seeing the inconsistency, I, I looked at the leadership in a different way, and it showed itself. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't until Bill Parcells came back in, and, and in his first year, he met, I met with him. I told you guys this story. I met with him, and he said, look, let me tell you something. You're a captain. You don't have to worry about guys being late anymore. I got this. Matter of fact, you ever heard of the scorch earth process? And I said, no, what the hell is that? And he says, I'm burning the ground, and we're going to start this thing over with. And I fell in line, man, and that's the sign mm. of a true leader. So, so under the bad leader, what were things that you were doing, you personally? How did you handle that? Because you again, what, it's easy to deal with a good leader. That's, that's fine. It made but how my, do you deal with a bad leader? Under the bad leader, how I handle it was it was a lot of pressure. It's, I mean, the, the captains of that team had to take on a yeah. lot of pressure. And we weren't just playing football anymore. It became bailing guys out of jail. It became, you know, holding guys' hands, making sure they got to meetings on time. And it, you know, my game started to lapse because – I was so concerned about everyone else and doing all these little things that, you know, it sucked. So I'll, I'll tell you this. One of the things that I, I wanted to approach the leadership with, and I actually did early on, was, look, how do I make you look better? How do I make you look better? Because they don't like you. Mm-hmm. And the guys that have had some success are, are looking at you sideways. How do I? And, and it's just through communication. 